Okay, our first guest was such a riot when he came on this show a couple of weeks ago. He just had to come back. Hey, Hi, Johnny. Good to see you. Hey, Hello, Mel. darling. How are you? Nice I'm to all see all right. you again. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hey, all right. I was asked to do a, a full frontal nude shot. You were? You know, I was. For a medical book. <laughs> We'd buy it. We would, Johnny. Uh, yeah. You're looking very smart as yeah, usual. Jenna, I'm not happy on here. This is just, I'm, I'm over the trap door, you know, here. <laughs> <laughs> they said if you're not getting any laughs, they pull a lever and you go down and shoot there. And you come up on Celebrity Big Brother. Oh. And, uh, you, you, I have to say, you mentioned how smart yes. you are. Like, must be good. I got myself ready. And, um, <laughs> no, I, it's funny, and I always used to dress off the peg. And then the neighbours started taking the washing in at night. <laughs> Virgin wool, this. It's wool from an ugly sheep. And, uh... Did you start out as a comic? No, well, I, I, you know, I was brought up in a funny, a funny environment, you know, and I had a like, dysfunctional family and all that. And uh, I had an uncle who was like a legendary drinker. In fact, he's in the record book of Guinnesses. And, uh... <laughs> He married a French lady, and the first time he brought her home to our house, uh, he came in and he'd, he'd had a few, you know, he was feeling no pain. And um, <laughs> he said, this is my French wife, Thora Mordo, he said, Quasimodo's sister. <laughs> 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 she said to me later, when I met your uncle, I knew he was Mr Wright, but until I married him, I didn't realise his first name was always. <laughs> I started off as a drummer in a band in the 60s, you know, yeah. I was in a pop group and uh, I had all my own hair and teeth then and um, I was, uh, we played, we you know, it was a fantastic time when I look back. Uh, when you meet people you don't realise at the time how famous they are, you know, like we worked with the Beatles. Did you really? Yeah, and the Rolling Stones. And then was this before they were? No, they were just, it was just Beatles men, they were just starting in 1963 and uh, it brings it home when your children are doing Beatles in modern history. Yeah. You know, <laughs> fantastic. But they were wonderful, you know, and... Uh, I got all their autographs and I've still got them and uh, I remember being in the dressing room with John Lennon and one of the other Beatles came out of a side room with a young lady and they were both a bit flushed and John said, uh, did you like the song? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> you see, I mean, you'd already established yourself then, Johnny, but I'm wondering, you know, what was the moment that you thought, do you know, I am going to spend my entire life making people laugh? Yeah, it's, uh, but it, uh, we, we, I was in the group and the, the singer we had, Malcolm, he died, unfortunately, he was only a young boy, and uh, we started doing comedy to fill it in. And once you get a laugh, it's, it's very addictive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's awful. I mean, when I was at school, I was convinced I was going to be a Don Juan with women, and that's just how my life turned out. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got the ladies have got an IP today, oh, I'll tell you. Women, Don Juan, nothing to do with me. And, uh, <laughs> I was, I was on the nudist beach in Benidorm and I could feel the women mentally dressing me. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who have you been most influenced by over the years? I, t I tend to like uh, character comedians, you know. I like, I like the old ones, like uh, Rob Wilton was a big favourite and I never saw him like but his film. Larry Grayson I used to adore, I thought it was fantastic. Bernard Manning, controversial but very funny. And, oh, I love Bernard. Uh, yeah, and Norm, Norman Collier could make a cat laugh. And uh, <laughs> I think the benchmark for me is, uh, is Bob Monkhouse, who's just absolutely fantastic. Mm. I mean, you see all sorts of daft stuff in this business, you know. I was in, I was in Manchester a bit since they had earth tremors, you know, quite bad earth tremors. Yeah, no, and, I read about and, those. And, uh, there was a travelling uh, fairground in Manchester and it, the tremors were that bad. The whole of the f temporary stalls collapsed. And the only thing left standing was six coconuts on the coconut shy. <laughs> I know that. I mean, how do I put this delicately? Because I, you know, I hope this is true. I'm, I'm told you've been compared to Hilda Baker. Now I don't quite understand that. Oh, bit. I, I look good in a frock. <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> well, that, that is a huge compliment, really. Well, Hilda, Hilda Baker was Hilda, Hilda Baker, <laughs> not the frock. And the frock. <laughs> Short, portly, and um, I was. Uh, I, I, I saw a thing, I found a film the other day, you know, when she did Nearest and Dearest, mm. the television show, well, they, they did a full-length feature film, and I found it on video. And the opening sequence, and she gets off the bus like that, and she's little high heels going down the street like that, and this fella shouts after her, ooh, Miss Pledge, Miss Pledge, and she sets off running, she thinks this fella's after her. And she gets in the house, and she shuts the door like that, and she's going, ooh, ooh, and the letterbox opens, she said, Miss Pledge, it's me, Vernon. She said, ooh, vermin. She said... <laughs> I thought it was the Boston Dangler, she said. <laughs> oh, but you get, you know, you get, you get to gigs and you, uh, like, you don't know where you're going to in this job sometimes. I mean, sometimes, you know what, something like Bob Monkhouse can work everywhere, do everything. 
And I, I got the bug. You know, I was really out of place. I got this hotel in Paris, and uh, it was a real swanky place, you know. You had to wear a tie in the swimming pool, you know. <laughs> and, uh, I know, that was a gag. And, um, <laughs> can I off a bit quicker? I've only got five minutes. And, uh, I was, on, I was on the little podium thing doing my act, and this couple walked in, and she was very, very elegant. She was like a, a debut tramp, and um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, he, he came in, and he was right. He, two of us were miserable. She was a professional lemon sucker, you know. And uh, <laughs> he came in, and he went. And I in front of me went, champagne for my wife. I was saying that's a good swap. <laughs> <laughs> This is quite a long time now, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Do you, I mean, not that we want you to, but do you think you'd ever think of retiring? Uh, do, do you know, I have a, a, a dear friend of mine, uh, Don Smoothie, he's a, a good old comic and a brother water. Uh, he said to me, You're in a business, Johnny, that you don't retire from. The business retires you. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it, could, it could alter your life, I know. Uh, I, uh, talking about retiring, I, I went to see, I uh, took my oldest daughter, Lindy, to see uh, Rosemary Clooney uh, about two years ago. And she was wonderful. And she told this story about Bob Hope, who was 96 at the time. And his children had never approached him to ask him like, delicate questions. So his son said to him, listen, Dad, we've never discussed this, but do you know when you're no longer with us? He said, would you, would you want a burial or a cremation? And Bob Hope says, surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I read a wonderful story the other day about, um, talk about losing your childhood. Shirley Temple. Remember Shirley Temple? Oh, yeah. Yes. Remember Shirley Temple? Yeah. Yes. She said she stopped believing in Father Christmas when she was four years old. Oh. Her mother took her to Macy's department store to Santa's Grotto and Father Christmas asked her for her autograph. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never used to believe in, in the tooth fairy until I saw the way my dentist walks. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hear where you're coming from. Here. It's so good to it's, it's lovely to see you. Thanks for coming in again. Oh, it's a dream. Please thank Johnny oh, Casson. Thank you. 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 Thank you